in this video we're going to change rational exponents uh, expressions to roots. So we'll go from rational exponents to roots and then we'll simplify. We'll start by looking at powers of a half, then powers of a third, powers of 1 over n, and then powers of m over n. Okay, so here's the first page, powers of a half, uh, powers of 1 third, powers of 1 over n examples, and powers of m over n examples. Okay, so let us look at changing rational exponents to roots. So we're first, this is the first time we've seen a very funny thing. We'll start with what is 4 to the power of 1 half when it's at home, if you know what I mean. So 4 cubed, we know, I hope, I hope we know what 4 squared is, and maybe we might even remember what 4 to the power of 1 is. So let's just have a look at these first of all. 4 to the squared is 4 times 4, that's 16. 4 cubed, you've got to times it by another 4, don't you? 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, that wasn't hard, right? Okay, 4 to the power of 1 is 4. Now, 4 to the power of half would come down in the sequence about here, wouldn't it? And then let's stick 4 to the power of 0 here. Just to kind of try and remember. Now 4 to the power of 0, do you remember what that is? Anything to the power of 0 is um, is 1, isn't it? It's actu Well, it's actually 4 divided by 4, if you remember, which is 1, okay? 4 to the power of 0 is 1. Now, 4 to the power of 1 is 4, 4 to the power of 0 is 1, and um, when I go down further, like 4 to the negative 1 is what? It's 1 over 4 to the power of 1, or 1 quarter, right? So um, let's think, what do you think 4 to the power of half is? Take a guess, just guess what it is, any number. Well, it has to be less than 4 and more than 1, wouldn't you agree? Because if I look at this sequence, I'm going, you know, 3, 2, 1, uh, 0, 1, negative 1. The 1 half slots into this sequence between the 1 and the 0 mark. So you would think the answer would probably be between 4 and 1 somehow, right? Yeah, it's not halfway between 4 and 1, by the way. We'll see what it is now. Um, let me show you one thing. If you were to imagine, if you want to imagine this, imagine that we took, um, imagine that we took uh, 4 to the power of 1 half and just for fun multiplied it by 4 to the power of 1 half. Why? Don't ask me why. But imagine we did that. What could we do? What, how could we calculate the answer? Don't, are, we're multiplying by the same base, so what can we do with the exponents? Okay, and that's where your one place where your power rules come in. There's the product rule multiplied by the same base and you add the exponents, right? So keep your exponent rule summary sheet beside you at all times. You're going to need it throughout this chapter, okay? We would add the exponents 4 to the power of 1 half plus 1 half. Now, do you know what a half and a half is? If you don't know that, then we're in trouble. You need to know that. Half plus a half is two halves or one, right? So that's four to the power of one, which is four, okay? Four to the power of one is four, right? Okay, so what I figured out is that if I take this number, four to the power of a half, and if I multiply it by itself, I actually end up with four. Hmm, what number times itself gives four? Any idea? Well, I'll tell you. Um, 2 times itself gives 4, doesn't it? So if 2 times itself gives 4, and if 4 and a half times itself gives 4, don't you think 4 and a half is equal to 2? Does that make sense? That is correct, 4 and a half is equal to 2, right? And another, if another way of thinking about 2 is 2 is in fact the square root of 4, isn't it? What's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. Yep, it is 2 indeed. 
So 4 to the power of a half is actually the square root of 4. And we know that the square root of 4 is 2, obviously. Okay, so if I take the square root of 4 and multiply it by itself, I get 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so 4 to the power of a half is in fact the square root of 4, which is of course 2. So there's two ways of writing it. Now, we're going to be looking at different roots, like third, fourth, fifth, and sixth roots. And remember that um, the square root is the same thing as the second root. So it's the second root of 4 is what it is. So 4 to the power of a half is in fact the second root of 4, which of course is 2, or the square root of 4, right? So take a wild guess. What do you think 9 to the power of 1 half is? Okay. And let me show you again. Um, 9 to the power of 1 half times 9 to the power of 1 half would in fact give us just for fun, 9 to the power of 1 half plus 1 half, which is 9 to the power of 1, which is 9. Okay? And we already know that 3 or the square root of 9 times itself, or 3 basically, 3 times 3 gives 9, doesn't it? Right? So, this, so in, in fact, um, 9 to the power of half is equal to 3, or the square root of 9. So 9 to the power of half is in fact the second root of 9, or uh, 3, basically, right? Right? Now, what do you think x to the power of half is? Take a guess. Take a wild guess. x to the power of half equals the second root of x, okay? Which, for, uh, in, in the math books, that is simple, uh, simply written as root x, and the reason is because um, there's less ink involved in just writing root x and uh, this is like the you know the standard if, if you don't have an, this, this little number here again is called the index and if you don't have an index written in there then it means uh, square root right okay so let's do a few of these if you had 25 to the power of one half okay that would be what the second root of 25 which would be just like the square root of 25 which is five, just the number five, okay? So can you do these ones? Thirty-six to the power of one half. One to the power of one half. Um, y to the power of one half. Zero to the power of one half. Okay, so pre press pause and try those, please, if you need more time. I'm going to write the answer down now in a few seconds. Okay, 36 to the power of 1 half is the second root of 36, which is um, 1 to the power of half is the second root of 1, or the square root of 1. So this is 6, and this is what times itself is 1? 1, right? y to the power of 1 half is the second root of y, or the square root of y, same thing, right? And 0 to the power of half is the second root of 0, or the square root of 0, which is just 0. Okay? <coughs> Alrighty, let's have a look at the powers of 1 third. Let's start with 8 to the power of 1 third, and um, So, to figure this out, let's have a look at, um, just for fun, 8 cubed, 8 squared, 8 to the power of 1, okay? And then 8 to the power of 3rd is going to come in here somewhere, uh, and then we've got 8 to the power of 0 and 8 to the negative 1. So, if we just kind of look at this sequence, 8 squared we know is 8 times 8, 64. 8 to the power of 3 is this times 8 again, isn't it? 8 times 4 is 32, put down the 2, carry the 3. 8 times 6 is 48, 48 and 3 is 51, right? 512. 8 to the power of 1 is 8. What's 8 to the power of 0? you might remember it's actually 8 divided by 8 which is 
1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, right? a to the power of negative 1 is this answer, 1 over 8, right? That's what. So a to the power of a third, what, tr take a wild guess to what it is. What would you guess it is? And again, if you look at this sequence, 3, 2, 1, 1 third, 0, negative 1. One thing we should try and deduce is that, look, the answer has to be between 1 and 8. Some number between 1 and 8. 8 to the power of a third. Does that make sense? So I just want to think, figure that out, see that at least, that, see, you know, have this kind of pattern in your head of powers where the negatives are all fractions, basically. Negative exponents are all fractions, basically. Positive exponents get bigger and bigger. And the fraction exponents are, you know, in between powers of 1 and powers of 0. Okay? So uh, they're uh, a different thing to deal with. Now, just for fun, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go um, a to the power of one third. I'm going to times it by itself three times, just for fun. Okay? Don't ask me why. But if I do that, I'm multiplying by the same base, so I can use the product rule. And you guys, you have your. Uh, exponent rules beside you, right? And you can read off the product rule. If you multiply by the same base, you add the exponents, right? So if I'm multiplying by the same base, I'm going to add the exponents. So if I multiply these two, I'll add the thirds, get a third and a third. And if I multiply this one, I'll add the next third, right? So it's going to be 8 to the power of 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third. What is a third added three times? Is it three thirds? Yep. And what's three over three? One, right? And eight to the power of one is eight. So eight to the power of a third times itself three times is definitely eight. We know that for a fact. But tell me this: what number times itself three times is equal to eight? Can you come up with a number? Because we found that 8 to the power of a third times itself 3 times is 8. So what number times itself 3 times is 8? Any idea? Well, 2, isn't it? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, right? And you might remember that that is, in fact, the cube root of 8 is 2, right? The cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8 times itself 3 times if you multiply a cube root times itself three times, <coughs> you end up with the inside eight, right? So because it's just the cube root of eight is two, so it's two times two times two, three times, which is eight. So eight to the power of third is in fact the cube root of eight or two, right? So eight to the power of third is the cube root of eight, which is two. What do you think twenty seven to the power of one third is? Take a guess. It's the same thing. It's the cube root of 27, or the third root of 27, if you like, which is what times itself three times gives 27. Three times three is nine. Three times nine, right? The number three, right? Three times three times three is 27, right? Okay, what is x to the power of one third? can be written the cube root of x. And I can't drop the index on this. When I had powers of 1 half, like x to the power of 1 half, that could have been written second root of x and then just without an index, just square root, because that was square, was the square root. That's, a special, that's the special one. That's the most common one. So you can leave the index off. But if you have cubes or cube roots, you can't. You've got to leave it there, right? So let's just do a few examples with uh, these guys. So what would um, 125 to the power of one third be equal to? Would it be the what root? The cube root of 125? What's that? Actually, it's actually, see, actually 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. So this is actually 5. 
Okay. Um, how about 64 to the power of one third? And do 1 to the power of one third, and then do y to the power of one third. So please press pause and calculate those, and then I'll do them with you. Okay, 64 to the power of one third is the cube root of 64. What times itself? 4 times gives 64. Well, 4 actually goes into that. 4 times, and 4 into that goes um, once, remainder 2, uh, 6. So this is actually 4 times 16, and 16 itself is 4 times 4. So what we have is 4 times 4 times 4. So what times itself? 3 times gives 64. The answer is the number 4. Okay. 1 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of 1, which is? What times it's up? 3 times gives 1? One. 1. And y to the power of 1 third is the cube root of y, right? Okay, so powers of a third, um, e to the power of 1 third equals? What's a to the power of 1 third? The cube root of a right okay so let's have a look at powers of in general powers of 1 over n so we saw that um, do, 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 when we had powers of 1 half a to the power of 1 half was the second root of a or just root a okay should have written that in there when we had powers of 1 third 1 over 1 over a, a to the power of 1 over 3 was the cube root of a. So what do you think something to the power of 1 quarter is? Any idea? Well it is in fact simply the fourth root of 16. Does that seem logical? You could just might just remember that and then what times itself 4 times gives a, gives a 16, right? But once again if you just break down 16 it's uh, 4 times 4, right? And then we can break down each one of the 4's into 4 is 2 times 2, right? And this other 4 is 2 times 2, so we have 2 times itself 4 times, so the 4 through to 16 is just 2, right? What is 32 to the power of 1 over 5, do you think? Take a guess. Well, if it's power of 1 over 5, that means it's the fifth root of that number, 32. What times itself 5 times gives 32, do you know? And um, once again, if you're stuck, you can just break it down. 32 is 8 times 4, isn't it? 4 is 2 times 2. 8 is 4 times 2. And this 4 can be broken down to 2 times 2. So what we have is 2 times 2 times 2, 3 of them, times 2 times 2. 5 twos multiplied, so 5th root 32 is of course 2. 1,000 to the power of 1 third, and by all means you can do all of these faster than me. Go ahead and race me and get to the end of the video, right? Go ahead and skip on if you like. Go ahead and do all these if you want. Just check the answers on the video. I'm going to go slowly so everyone gets a chance to learn though, okay? 1,000 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of... 1,000. Okay? And it's asking what times itself 3 times gives 1,000. And 1,000, of course, is 10 times 100. And 100 is 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 gives 1,000. So 3 tens multiplies gives 1,000. So the answer is 10. And so on. Right? So what is 1 to the power of 10? 1 to the power of 1 tenth, rather, not to the power of 10. 1 to the power of 1 over 10 is the tenth root of 1. In other words, what times itself 10 times gives 1? So what times itself 10 times gives 1? Any idea? What number multiplied by itself 10 times would give 1? Let's see, how about, take a guess. What about 1? Would that work? 
Yep, one times itself ten times is one, isn't it? So the tenth root of one is one. Eighty-one to the power of a half is in fact equal to the second root of eighty-one or the square root of eighty-one, which is which is nine, right? What's eighty-one to the power of one quarter? It is the fourth root of 81, right? It's saying what times itself four times gives 81, and again you can break that down. 81 is nine times nine, and nine is three times three, and this nine is three times three as well. So we have one, two, three, four threes been multiplied. What times itself four times gives 81, the answer is three, okay? So x to the power of one fifth would be the fifth root of x. Please press pause and do these last two by yourself if you're still following along. Please press pause and do these by yourself. Okay, now I'm going to do them now. y to the power of one over thirteen is the thirteenth root of y. p to the power of one over two is the second root of p, which can also be written as the square root of p, right? And um, last page for this video, powers of m over n. Okay, oh sorry, last thing, what we should have written down is, for powers of 1 over n, a to the power of 1 over n is equal to, any idea? Take a guess. The nth root of a. Okay? The nth root of a. And that will cover all we've done so far. So what I'd like you to do is take out your exponent rules summary sheet, flip it over, and on the back write down rational exponents. The first rule is a to the power of 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a. So for example, as we've seen, you know, 8 to the power of 1 over 3 equals the third root of 8. Okay, which is, you know, 2, right? For example. Now, we'll do 8 to the power of m over n next. That's the next thing to do, okay? So, 8 cubed all squared. If you take that, just imagine eight. To the, oh, sorry, eight, not eight cubed. Eight to the power of one third, and then squared. If you imagine that, and if you remember your power rule, where you multiply exponents. If you multiply, if you take a power of a power, you can multiply the exponents with that power rule, right? If you take that, this means that you can take eight, and you can go two multiplied by one third. Now 2 is 2 over 1, isn't it? And 2 over 1 multiplied by 1 over 3 is 1 times 2, 2 over 3 times 1, 3. It's 8 to the power of 2 thirds, okay? So I just want you to see that 8 to the power of 2 thirds can actually be written like this. 8 to the power of 1 third all squared. Do you see that? I just went backwards from where I started, right? I but I can go I can do that. Eight to the power of two over three is eight to the power of one third all squared. I can do that if I want, right? And I can calculate that. Eight to the power of one third is the cube root of eight, isn't it? And then we have to square it, okay? And the cube root of eight is what? It's two. And what's 2 squared? 4, right? So 8 to the power of 2 thirds is in fact 4, right? Similarly, if you took 27 to the power of 1 third and then squared it, you could imagine, you could just, just for fun, I just want you to do this for fun, multiply these exponents because you're doing the power rule now but it's, it's a power of a power you're allowed to multiply the exponents and two two times one third is the same thing as two over one times one over three which is two 
over 3. So we have 27 to the power of 2 over 3, right? And I'm just going to go backwards now for fun and write that as 27 to the power of 1 third all squared. It's the same thing. We just showed that. If I multiply the 2 in, I'll get this, won't I? Right? So I'm just going backwards for fun. This way and then this way. Just to show you that, that these things are the same, aren't they? Do you understand that these are the same? Okay. Now, 27 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of 27. So what we have is the cube root of 27 all squared. Now tell me this, what is the cube root of 27? What time does it solve three times Gibbs 27? 27 is 9 times 3 and 9 is 3 times 3 so the answer is 3 times itself 3 times is 27. So what we have right here is 3 and then it's 3 all squared which is 9. Okay, So 27 to the power of th 2 thirds is in fact 9. Okay. Anyway, 32 to the power of 1 fifth, all to the power of 4. Just for fun, I'm going to take this and multiply it in using the power rule. The power of a power, you can multiply the exponents. And that will give me 32 to the power of, now 1 fifth multiplied by 4 is the same thing as 1 fifth times 4 over 1, which is 1 times 4 is 4, multiply the tops of the fraction, then multiply the bottoms of the fraction, 5 times 1 is 5. Okay. So I have 32 to the power of 4 fifths. I'm just showing you that this and this are the same thing. And just for fun, I'm just going to break them up. Because I want to show you that, of course, if these are the same, I can go from here to here, just the same way as I can go from here to here. So I'm going to write this as 32, five, or 32, sorry, not 35, 32 to the power of 1 fifth, all to the power of 4, okay? And 32 to the power of 1 fifth is the fifth root of 32. Okay, and it's all to the power of 4, and that is the fifth root of 32 is, you might remember it's actually 2, and so we have 2 to the power of 4, and 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, and times 2 again, what's 8 times 2? 2 eighths is 16. Okay, <coughs> so that's that, and um, Basically, if I had 4 to the power of 3 over 2, I could write that, just for fun, as 4 to the power of 1 half, all cubed. See what I mean? Because multiplying these would, would bring me back to where I started. 3 times a half is 3 over 2, right? And 4 to the power of a half, of course, is the second root of 4. So I have the second root of 4, or 4... Uh, all and then it's all cubed, isn't it? But what is the second root of 4? What is the square root of 4? Well, it's 2. So I have 2 cubed. And what's 2 cubed? 2 times 2 times 2? It's 8, isn't it? Right. So 4 to the power of 3 over 2 works out to be 8. Um, press pause and see if you can figure this one out. 36 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, Did you give it a go. I'm going to try it now. It can be written like this. 36 to the power of 1 half, then cubed. And 36 to the power of half is the, the square root of 36, which is 6, right? And 6 cubed is... Six times six is thirty-six, and thirty-six times six, six six is thirty-six, and carry the three. Six times three is eighteen. Eighteen plus three is twenty-one. Okay, so it's that. Um, one hundred twenty-five to the power of four thirds. Can you do this one? And I guess uh, the point is, I guess that we come to a point where you don't want to do this step with the exponents of the power rule. What you really just want to do is you want to kind of, you start to remember that, look, this guy in the bottom becomes the uh, root, okay? Cube root of 125. And then I've got to put it to the power of the top number, 4. Just like here, um, when I had 32 to the 4 fifths, this bottom number became the fifth root, the top number became the power of on, on everything. 
see that the bottom number becomes the the index on the root and the top number is times everything so usually students like to just remember how to go from here to here and then they just work it out and that's fine okay but I had to show you why otherwise what's the point right anyway cube root of 125 is 5 and 5 to the power of 4 is in fact 5 times 5 25 carry the 2 5 times 2 is 10 and 2 is 12 carry the 1 5 times 1 is 5 and 1 is 6 so 625 right so like I said uh, students just like to remember that the bottom number becomes the index on the root so if you have x to the power of 3 over 5 I just get the fifth root of x and then the whole thing is cubed Okay. so how would you rewrite this guy the bottom number becomes the index on the root and then you've got y and then of course it's all cubed and you can also write that how how else can you write that and in the back of your text in your textbook answers and stuff it'll be written as just root y all cubed what it yep so that's that if you had this type of situation okay um you would first apply the um, power rule if you if you where if you have factors if you have multiplication inside here the um, one fifth gets distributed here and here right so you get three times a fifth which is three fifths x to the power of three fifths isn't it because that's three over one and it's times y to the power of three times a fifth three fifths okay and how else how can these be written with roots then well that would be the fifth root of x all cubed right times the fifth root of y all cubed wouldn't it so please do this one now a to the power of four times b squared all to the power of one over nine same way so please press pause to give yourself more time if you need and try it yourself, it'll be on the homework anyway, you might as well figure it out now, right? So you imagine that like 4 is actually 4 over 1 and 2 is 2 over 1 and you're going to multiply the ninth in here and here so that becomes 4 times 1 is 4 over 1 times 9 is 9, a to the power of 4 ninths times b to the power of 2 ninths and then you rewrite these guys with roots. The bottom number is the index, right? Ninth root of a, and the top number is the power, the power of four. Okay, and then this one we have the ninth root of b, and then that's all squared okay so um, the rule is if you have a to the power of m over n it is written as the nth root of a to the power all to the power of m does that make sense and if you take out your rational expo your uh, exponent rule summary sheet please stack stick that in there a to the power of m over n is the nth root of a all to the power of m okay so for example um, let's just put an example there if you had um, oh we might as well do the uh, same thing a to the power of two thirds okay that would be the cube root of eight all squared right which would be um, cube root of 8 is 2 and 2 all squared is 4 okay so that's the difference between 8 to the power of m over n and 8 to the power of 1 over n right you can see that